Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I just wanted to let you guys know that it is official, the holiday tea boxes will be here next week. So these holiday tea boxes make really good gifts. Basically you'll get three different types of teas. There's gonna be three different types of boxes to choose from. So one will be a holiday beauty box. The second will be a holiday wellness box. And the third one will be a holiday flavored box, okay? They'll come with three different teas. They all hold an ounce of tea in each canister. and You can make up to 12 to 14 cups of tea. So if you guys are interested in this, this will be available next week on lovelytea.net. And if you're interested in any other tea products, make sure you guys go on to amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much once again for all your support and stay tuned for the video. Okay, so the other day we had a really awesome discussion on my Instagram page. I mean, the comments were insane. So if you guys don't know, I had posted a post on Instagram, basically taught my Michael B. Jordan and how he finally admitted that he had to go to counseling after he took on the role of Killmonger. So I'm gonna go ahead and read to you guys what I wrote on Instagram. Go ahead and check this out. So on Instagram, I said, I told y'all in my Boys in the Hood video that as an actor, you have to go to dark places when acting dark characters, and sometimes it can overtake your entire being. I'm glad he was able to exercise the spirit of Killmonger out of him. Heath Ledger and the actor who killed Ricky, Lloyd Avery, weren't so lucky. But y'all keep thinking that spirits can't overtake you and it's all mumbo jumbo. So that's what I wrote on Instagram. And of course it caused a lot of really good conversation. You know, a lot of folks were like, well, you know what? That wasn't a bad character. That's my hero and this and that. And we were basically breaking it down to people that it's not about it being a dark character or an evil character. But anytime that you have to basically become somebody else and you're doing method acting, you're taking on that character's essence. You're taking on their spirit. You're taking down their entire being. And you're basically putting yourself on the back burner to become this person. And when a lot of people take on roles, they take on roles, they're literally having to be that character for upwards of several months to sometimes years before they go into production. So imagine being somebody else and having to stay into character for a long time to be able to deliver that role. There's even been cases of women who have played prostitutes or unsavory sexual characters. And then because they allowed themselves to get stuck into that role, they're now, you know, being very sexually fluid. They're going to, you know, industry parties, sleeping with everybody. And then in the worst case scenario, they end up getting prostituted and sucking dick on skid row. I mean, it really can happen. So people need to realize that acting, it's not just getting in front of the camera and then spewing out a bunch of words. You literally have to convey a message. You have to have the audience believe that you are Killmonger, that you are the Joker. You know what I'm saying? That you are the that person. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what Michael B. Jordan had to say about him going to counseling. Go ahead and check this out. So Michael B. Jordan says, it was one of those things I didn't know what was going on. I never was in a character for that long of a period of time and was. I guess that dark, that lonely, that painful. So coming out of it, I thought, oh yeah, business as usual. I can just go back home. I cut my hair off and everything will be back to normal. Unfortunately, going to dark places in order to inhibit the role of T'Challa's first major foe left a lasting impression on Jordan. I found myself kind of in the routine of being isolated and went out of my way to make sure I was by myself and didn't say too much more than usual, the actor continued. Once I got finished wrapping the movie, it took some time to talk through how I was feeling and why I was feeling sad and a little bit depressed. After seeking professional help, the star eventually found himself emerging from his emotionally isolated state and feeling more connected with those around him. Not just being in the room, but being present and engaging, Jordan said. And just talking things out that I never really kind of got out. All right, so you guys just heard what Michael B. Jordan had to say. So I really respect this brother for coming out and keeping it real. A lot of people don't speak about that. You know, people just talk about the awards and the money that they made and the, you know, the, the fancy cars and the fancy homes. But these actors put themselves in a lot of precarious situations, you know, especially when you're talking about method acting. Now, granted, you know, a lot of the movies that we see out now are like, you know, comedy movies. It's not a big stretch from that person. Like if it's Kevin Hart or Tiffany Haddish playing like, you know, their usual characters, there's not much method that goes into that that's mainly themselves but you know when you're taking on the essence of somebody else especially a darker character and you guys can say that Killmonger is a hero and that's fine but he was still a dark character I kept encountering articles and conversations saying he was the best antagonist since Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight mm -hmm. 
When looking at the design of the two characters, it's clear that they have several similarities. But it's their differences that are really interesting. He killed several people, including his girlfriend. You know, he was a very murderous character, even though, you know, he was standing for what he thought was right. Put your gun down now! I'm sorry. Sorry, Eric. It's gonna be okay. Um, another thing I noticed, we talked about this on Instagram, is I remember when this video went viral and I didn't get it at the time, but I remember there was this white reporter and she basically, while she was interviewing Michael B. Jordan, she hit him with the Wakanda sign. And you could see that he was visibly upset. He was annoyed. Like he, you know, he was dead serious. He was just like really agitated. And I didn't get it at that time. Like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is he so upset? Like, I can get that can be annoying. Like, every time you walk down the street, people are going like this. But it just seemed deeper. Now that he's come out and said he had to get therapy for it, now it makes sense. He was still stuck in the character of Killmonger. So when the woman did that, it triggered something within him. Like, you know what? You're the enemy. You're the ops. You're siding with Chala and, you know, the Wakanda nation. And I'm against that. And I feel like that's why he got really upset. And that's why he felt really funny when the woman did that. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So okay. you saw the movie now, right? Or you saw it before? I saw it before. Okay. 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 What? What's it? I'm from Wakanda. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. What? What's it? I'm from Wakanda. Honey. So when I go back and I watch that interview now, it makes sense. He was still in character, even though he had cut off his hair, he thought everything was okay, but he wasn't. You could just tell like his stance, he got really uncomfortable. He crossed his legs. He's like, I ain't from Wakanda. You know what I mean? Like he took it so personal and she's shook like, damn, you know, I just threw up the Wakanda sign. What's the problem? So this is very real. And I know a lot of y'all like to clown me and say, you know, you're always thinking something spiritual, but like somebody else said in that comment section is human beings were more spiritual than even human you know this is just simply one plane of existence there's other parallel universes you know so i definitely feel like you know when you get into method acting you have to know how to exercise that stuff out of you and that was the one thing i was blessed with when i had my acting coach in la he was very big on making sure to exercise those characters out of you because it's so easy to get into a character but once you've been in that character for six months or up to a year it's very hard to get that character and their being and their essence the way they move the things they do the way they talk it's hard to get that out of you so you have to get a good acting coach who knows how to exercise characters out of you if not you may find yourself in a situation like Heath Ledger where he was stuck being the Joker 24 7 and he eventually overdosed or like Lloyd Avery who played all these gangbanging roles in Boys in the Hood and other movies and he ended up becoming a gangbanger and ended up going to prison and his whole situation was really sad the time of his capture, he was 30 years old and he was finally landing more work. Um, he was in Master P's movie Lockdown and Shot, where again, he played that same crazy character. Uh, the one character's name is G-Ride. Um, he would go off and, you know, he was shooting folks. He was always playing the, the same crazy character. And for some reason, it seemed like he did not know how to exercise these characters out of him. It's one of the things that you learn when you're in acting is that you have to become that character, but then you also have to learn a safe way to remove yourself out of that because it can drive you nuts. You know, people always talk about the Heath Ledger thing, how when he became the Joker, it, it literally drove him crazy because you can really take on these personas. I warned him. <laughs> Listen, Jack. <laughs> And I don't know if he ever had somebody really teach him how to come out of these roles because obviously he did not know how to come out of the roles that he played because he ended up manifesting these same roles in real life. Soon after he moved from the safety of the valley 
to the jungles. And if you guys know anything about the jungles, that's where a lot of the bloods come from in LA. If you guys have not seen my Boys in the Hood 20 Years Later uh, video, it has over a million views, so make sure you guys check that out. But yes, method acting is very serious, and I'm just really happy that he went out and he got the help that he needed. Um, Denzel Washington has also spoken out about this. He said when he played the role of that corrupted cop in Training Day, it took him a long time to exercise that cop out of him. 23 hour lockdown. I'm the man up in this piece. You'll never see the light of day. Who the fuck you think you fucking with? I'm the police. I run shit here. You just live here. You know, when you take on those dark characters, you know, even if they're not evil and killing somebody, when you take on a character that's so different from who you are as a human being, it can definitely affect you not only emotionally, but definitely psychologically. So I'm glad that Michael B. Jordan is using his huge platform to talk about this. And personally, once I learned about method acting and I saw like how much damage it can do to actors, because you gotta realize there's a lot of people who act who are not, you know, they're not household names. You have people who act in theater plays and on stage and at schools and things like that. And they're not, you know, household names like Denzel or Holly Berry. And they're playing dark characters. They're playing nefarious characters. And sometimes it's hard for them to come up out those characters as well. So you have to be very aware of this, especially if you have children who are getting into acting. You have to be very, very aware, especially if you have children or, you know, young people who play like, you know, darker roles. Or if they play in horror movies, it can be very hard to exercise, you know, those dark entities out of you so it's it's a real phenomenon and people need to be aware of this so I'm really happy that Michael B. Jordan is talking about this so anyways you guys let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Michael B. Jordan and him talking about how he had to get counseling to get out of the role of Killmonger so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces <laughs>